You know him, you love him, he's our fire-breathing friend, our purple pal, he is Lockheed the dragon, and one of Kitty Pride's greatest companions and best friends. And that's the relationship we're going to talk about today, and we'll be examining it through Excalibur issue 40, The Trial of Lockheed. This issue gets really zany really quickly, so to help set the scene and contextualize this for you, it's important that you know in the previous issue of Excalibur, Lockheed is gravely injured by Doctor Doom as he's fighting alongside the rest of the team in Limbo. Interestingly enough, this issue opens up with one of the surgeons who's operating on Lockheed delivering an anecdote about a beloved childhood pet who died, and to comfort her, her father told her about a separate heaven just for animals. But this thought actually disillusioned her for a bit about, you know, regular people heaven, because as she says, What's the point of eternal life if you can't spend it with your best friend? Now, while that kind of makes a connection that Lockheed is similar to a pet for Kitty Pride and the rest of the team, I think the rest of the issue goes on to flesh out how Lockheed has actually sort of transcended any idea of pethood and has truly just become a best friend and a valued member of the team. Pretty standard narrative stuff so far, but this is where, as promised, things start to get zany. Lockheed is a dragon, uh, not of this world for those who don't know, and the surgeons are having some difficulty operating on him, and at this point, they've done everything they can. That's when we see this astral form of Lockheed rise up and out of his body, and not only that, but this is one of the rare instances where Lockheed's thoughts are made explicitly known to us. We get his speech bubbles in this issue, which, a according to an editor's note, are translated loosely from dragon speak, which gives us this kind of fun, ye old English and rhyming rhetoric for Lockheed. The natural thought progression for floating out of your body, especially after being injured, would be that you may have kicked the bucket, but actually Lockheed's astral form is being beamed up into a spaceship, a spaceship that's being manned by astral projections of Lockheed's own alien dragon race. This isn't a friendly summoning though, this is actually for a trial, hence the titular trial of Lockheed. Now at this point you might be wondering, what crime, what atrocity could our dashing dragon friend have possibly committed? Well, the race that Lockheed comes from was apparently founded on community, and one of their most sacred laws is to keep that community together. So by Lockheed joining up with Kitty Pride and Excalibur, he's broken that law, and if found guilty, Lockheed's punishment will be death. Which Lockheed must have known when he first abandoned them for the X-Men, which I think says a lot about the immediate connection he made with Kitty Pride. I don't want to necessarily say they're soulmates, but in a platonic way, maybe they kind of are. The universe brought them together for a reason across a vast distance, they instantly felt at home with each other, and as their relationship grew, their mental bond elevated to a level of pure, unconditional love. And we get some more insight into Lockheed's feelings about Kitty Pride and the rest of the team, actually, as this is a fair trial that he's on, so he is allowed to defend himself. And his defense is basically character commendations for Kitty Pride and the rest of the Excalibur team. Which look, there are holes in this story, like the fact that Lockheed's defense really is in no way a defense of his crime. It's kind of like saying, well yeah, I committed murder, but that person was really annoying, you know? This issue isn't written perfectly, there's a lot of missed opportunities and a lot of fair critiques of it. I think conceptually it's worth discussing though, and I'm probably extrapolating a lot that isn't truly there, but I think there's some subtext and some interesting information we can add to the tapestry of Lockheed and Kitty's relationship here. I should also let you know at this point, before we take a look into Lockheed's thoughts, that it's actually my personal opinion that none of this really happens and it's all just a coma-induced dream from Lockheed. I support that really because no one ever references this story again and Lockheed has met up with his race again and none of what happened here seems to have actually happened. Now, it may be that this story is ignored often also because it's written by Scott Lobdell who maybe quite didn't understand what Alan Davis was trying to do with Excalibur and in truth this is kind of a filler issue before Alan Davis gets back to the title. Although I think it is maybe his most successful issue of Excalibur and the one that comes closest to tapping into Davis's sort of farcical British nature to it. But back on point, I think this is more Lockheed rationalizing with himself his decision to leave his people, to leave sort of a non-unique identity-based community, and join the X-Men where he can thrive, be unique, make friends, and just be his best dragon self. 
a sort of metaphorical bookend to the dragon race part of his life. It's kind of like deathbed closure. He's letting himself know that he did make the right decision. So for Lockheed's defense, he uses a spirit brush to display basically a PowerPoint of emotion to his peers in the court. He does this for a few of the characters and calls out their noble attributes and whatnot, but I really want to specifically look at Kitty's splash page here. Now the writing is more surface level than I would have liked. I think it's a missed opportunity that we didn't get a lot more text and a lot more insight into how Lockheed perceives his relationship with Kitty, but I'm going to gather some of those gaps from not only the subtext of what Lockheed is saying, but I'm going to also look at the art here that's depicted as well, since these are his thoughts. Smartly smart, bravely brave, and prettily pretty, she's Catherine Pride, Shadow Cat, or just plain Kitty. These are the first three attributes that Lockheed associates with Kitty Pride, and I think there's a reason that it is in that specific order. I think it is an order of importance and an order of what Lockheed noticed with her. In Lockheed's first appearance in Uncanny X-Men number 166, he is watching Kitty for a while and catches his first glimpses of all these character traits, which is the foundation for his connection to her. And these all grow and are reinforced as their relationship continues to progress. What I found fascinating about this artwork is if we read it like we would words, which is left to right, which isn't super appropriate since splash pages don't really work that way, but still, if we did, first thing we'd see is this image of Kitty that looks like she's worried about something or doubting herself and perhaps that's another reason Lockheed was able to relate to her in that sense. As she was super new to the X-Men team and unsure about her abilities and her path, Lockheed was also unsure about his future and destiny and what his life would be like if he just stayed with his pack. But the next big image we see is the two of them, Kitty holding Lockheed up in the air and they're sort of staring into each other's eyes and Kitty we can see has this amused look of relief or happiness and we can also see a slight smile from the side of Lockheed's head as well. And the text bubbles here say, In deep space we met in that moment I knew. I'd met a kindred spirit, a love truly true, which ties back into that idea of a platonic soulmate, as I mentioned earlier. And then the speech bubbles that are connected with her shadow cat outfit seem to imply that Lockheed is very proud of Kitty for, and a reminder that this is when the X-Men are presumed dead, not wallowing in the grief and instead making it her goal to preserve and uplift the dream of Charles Xavier. In other words, and depicted literally and triumphantly through the art, she stands for something, and Lockheed wants to stand with her for that. Now, after the other splash pages and more of Lockheed's narration, some of the dragons piloting the ship fall asleep and basically Lockheed ends up having to save them all from dying. This in turn leads them to decide not to execute Lockheed, but to instead exile him and let him be with his newfound family on Earth. But again, I don't think this really happened, so it's more Lockheed coming to terms with the fact that he was meant to be with the X-Men and he's happy where he's found himself. He then goes back into his body and then eventually wakes up and recovers from his injuries. So while it's not really a definitive story or has a long-lasting impact on anything, I think the trial of Lockheed acts as a nice little dive into the mind of Lockheed and re-emphasizes the strong bond that Kitty and Lockheed have with each other while also just having some creative fun with the medium. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I read the issue, had some thoughts, and just really wanted to talk about it with you all. So I hope that's good by you and please do let me know if you want more like this. Also, please consider subscribing if you haven't as we're so close to 500 and that would be really cool. So thank you all and have a great rest of your day.